I will question why the writers thought this was a good plot point so the day I die. And so they continue it in the next episode, Duel on an Asteroid. Scorponok is shocked to find that the transector obviously got damaged in the last episode and needs repairs. The headmasters are conveniently talking about Six Shot, wondering if anyone will take his place. Right, because so many Decepticons are lining up for worst title ever. When Six Shot arrives. Oh, how convenient. Scorponok comes with a bullshit reason why he left Six Shot behind, who stupidly accepts. The Autobots reunite during a battle, during which Six Shot comes up with an idea. He proposes to Scorponok that he distracts the Autobots by challenging Chrome Dome to a one on one battle while the Decepticons speed to Earth. Six Shot makes his deal with Chrome Dome, who moronically agrees. As the two factions regroup, everyone tries to convince Chrome Dome not to waste his time with the duel. Chrome Dome will have none of it, and even hits Brainstorm for suggesting to take his place in the fight. Ass. Chrome Dome whines to Point Blank about how he has to fight Six Shot and get his revenge. Point Blank warns Chrome Dome that if he continues with the fight, he will be fired from his position in Autobot forces. But I got no problem with that. Chrome Dome is willing to accept, deciding it's better to fight and die than live with the knowledge he ran. Point Blank understands how Chrome Dome feels, explaining he was a brash and arrogant when he was young, which would often get him in trouble with Optimus Prime. Ah, character development, once again proving he's the best character in the show. Chrome Dome heads off to fight Six Shot on the Juno asteroid, which is a real asteroid from what I've heard. When Six Shot heads off, Scorponok orders the Duocons to put a bomb on Juno to kill Six Shot. Why is he doing this? He has no reason to double cross Six Shot unless he literally wants Six Shot to murder him. When they see the Decepticons fly off, Cerebros has this reaction. <laughs> Six Shot's challenge was a distraction? Something that was blatantly obvious! It seems pretty pathetic that they fell for a trick Megatron used back in Season 1 in the American show. I assume the Autobots wouldn't fall for the exact same trick twice, though admittedly the Headmasters were hiding on Master and the Target Masters were fighting across the galaxy at the time. Daniel gets his exosuit and heads out to Juno to stop Chrono and Six Shot's fight, still under the impression that Six Shot is his friend. Wheelie begs Cerebros to go rescue him, again, and despite realizing Scorponok is now closer to Earth than before, is about to go after him. Jesus, this guy has no priorities. Point Blank, being the only one on board Maximus that has a brain, decides to go and retrieve Daniel while the others head to Earth. On Juno, Chrono and Six Shot fight. It goes just about as well as you expect. I gotta admit, it's very satisfying to see Chrono Dome get his ass kicked. Before Six Shot can put Chrono Dome out of my misery, Daniel arrives. Six Shot tells Daniel to fuck off, but Daniel refuses. Okay, okay, sorry, I couldn't help it, but really, can you blame me at this point? Instead of doing what he should do, you know, blow a huge hole in the kid's chest, Six Shot hesitates, long enough for Scorpion's bomb to go off. And like with Mars, it doesn't blow up in one explosion. Instead, several smaller ones go off. All three try to get away from the asteroid, and Daniel falls down a crevice, where he dies. Sorry, I got overzealous again. Instead, Six Shot catches Daniel and returns him to Chrome Dome, then gets caught in the blast, swearing Scorbonok hasn't seen the last of him. Point Blank arrives just in time to see Juno finally succumb to the longest explosion in history. Sadly, he returns to Maximus alone, as he was unable to save Chrome Dome and Daniel. Ugh, I don't know why I bother. Of course Chrome Dome and Daniel survived. Point Blank takes them back to Maximus, where Chrome Dome is welcomed back into the Autobot ranks. Why? Daniel is still sad about Six Shot. WHAT IS WRONG WITH THIS KID?! HE KILLED ULTRA MAGNUS, A GUY DANIEL KNEW HIS ENTIRE LIFE! Chrome Dome, though, highly doubts Six Shot's actually dead. <laughs> Finally, after wasting so much of my time on one-shot worlds with stupid names, robots using magical friendship powers, replacing the main villain of the series, who had a goal in mind, mind you, with a petty extremist, and way too much focus on Daniel and Wheelie, we reach the two-part climax, The Final Showdown on Earth, the only episodes with titles that are not idiotic. Part 1 begins on Earth, with a satellite being launched to orbit. And the Decepticons, that were smart enough to stay behind on Earth rather than go with the Master, start causing random destruction. Most notably, Predaking and Bruticus sink an ocean liner. 
Metroplex, apparently in charge of the Earthbound Autobots, contacts Cerebros for aid. Because after all, it's not like there are like 50 other Autobots that could deal with this. I mean, for crying out loud, Metroplex is a city bot. He could probably handle the entire Decepticon armada by himself. Metroplex reports that in addition to thousands of deaths, yeah, they don't say who, they don't even care anymore, a tower is forming in Australia's capital of Canaberia. I am pretty sure the capital of Australia is Sydney, but whatever. As this is going on, Metroplex actually meets with the Headmaster's Target Masters in person, and they talk about shit we already know. What we didn't know is that Sixshot had survived the explosion in the last episode, and hitched a ride aboard Maximus to get to Earth. While the Target Masters go investigate a second tower appearing in South America, no real idea where it is, just South America, RC gets word that Spike and Carly were on a plane that was forced to make an emergency landing in the Andes Mountains. The Headmasters take Daniel and Wheelie to the crash site. Spike is alright, but Carly is unconscious at the bottom of a crevice. Yeah, remember what I said about the series being misogynistic? Oh, and guess what? It's Daniel that rescues her. Not Spike, not Mercer Fairborn, not even Sparkplug. It's Daniel. And the best part, this scene is completely pointless! The Target Masters arrive in South America, where they encounter the deadly, powerful Predaking. What was that? I realize the Target Masters are supposed to have overly powerful guns, but this is Predaking, the strongest of all the Jessalts. The tower begins to emit energy, as does the one in Australia. Meanwhile, Sixshot runs to Bruticus, Wingspan, and Pounce, who are unaware of the fact Scorbinock double-crossed him. Bruticus is shoved aside, like all combiners have been at this point. The clones then explain that the towers are feeding energy from the planet into the satellite in orbit, and that Scorbinock's plan is going to come to completion at the North Pole. Sixshot then does this. <laughs> 